Here I am, working retail at Via's Outlet, where I interact with so many different flavors of people. A lady comes in with her nose high in the air, wearing her big red hat, pleased that her hat announced her arrival into the royal courts. The clack of her heels getting louder as she enters the room. Notes of fine powder and carnations fill the air as she scrutinizes the clothes and shoes. She holds up a dress to herself in the mirror and scrunches up her nose in disapproval, tossing the dress onto the nearest shelf because she can't be bothered to put it back on the rack. As she journeys through the store, leaving behind an aftermath of destruction, like the Tasmanian devil from Looney Tunes, she brings me a left shoe only, blasting me. You don't have my size on the floor. You can go in the back and check for more. As I respond, I'm sorry, ma'am. We don't have a stock room. What's out is out. She cuts me off. You don't carry my size? It's a common size. Can you special order one for me? I glance behind her, and I saw the state of the shop. My irritation grows as I've come to realization that we close in 15 minutes and I have to clean up this lady's mess, a devastation that is best described as a gang of toddlers relentlessly searching the store in search of chocolate. I give her a shrug, say, no. As she storms out screaming, well, I'm going to tell the girls in my Red Hat Society not to shop here because you're rude. I think to myself, I work at a mall, an outlet mall. Why does the Red Hat Society care? <laughs> I don't let that bother me, though, as I think about dinner. The red, yellow building with the bright lights. The picture in the window of a man, who I can only assume is Mr. Roberto himself, wearing a big mustache and a sombrero, greeting me with the smell of fried oil and fabuloso. <laughs> After I place my order, my happiness is gone. My $6 California burrito is now $17 with guacamole. You can't have a Cali burrito without guacamole. That's absurd. The way the buttery goodness of the humble avocado mingles with the meat, dancing on your tongue, waking up your palate, it's just not the same without it. But choosing to have a quarter of an avocado smashed and mixed into my food is now a life decision. I'm at home trying to enjoy my dinner. I see that rent went up again. This is getting out of hand. It's as if landlords need to keep increasing rent to pay for luxuries like guacamole. I'm finding jobs here and there, but I work for a year or so before my hours are cut. I end up changing paths to work in manufacturing. Then I'll lose jobs either because the company moves out of state or shuts down. I'm unable to find jobs with decent pay because the first thing interviewers notice on my resume is a lack of education. Here I am, struggling. Work, work, work. My parents made sure that was drilled into me when I was younger. You need to find a good job to make money. To them, money was success. All I knew about growing up was going to work. Dad was always working late for the overtime. He would come home tired, grease stained on his hands, and as he passed you, the smell of shaved oil and metal would fill the area, metal shavings still clinging onto his shirt. Mom took the swing shift for differential pay. Even if it was only an extra 50 cents an hour, it was still more money. I would come home from school to find the apartment dark and empty. My parents' measurement of success meant that I was home alone most of the time. But Mom made sure there was food at home waiting for me before she left for work. Even if it was just shake and bake, it was still love. The familiar smell of toasted breadcrumbs, the warmth of the oven running, making the air fragrant herbs and spices, garlic, onion, paprika, brown sugar, giving you a big hug. The smell of butter lets me know there was corn, and of course, being Asian, there's rice. Pursuing money like my parents, in high school, I was introduced to telemarketing. Oh, what's that, yes? Well, let me tell you about this new exciting opportunity where you can get hair fair and hotel for two for a whole week in Hawaii. That's right, five days and six nights at one of the beautiful islands where you'll be sipping pina coladas and falling asleep on the shores of Honolulu. <laughs> or at least that's what I was trained to say. I got pretty good at telemarketing. Just throw in a big smile while reading the script over the phone. Your excitement will get your client eager to tend the timeshare. I kept getting promoted, getting paid more. I discovered more telemarketing hacks. High school was great. With a pocket full of money, I paid for my own gas, my own phone, went out with friends. I got to a point where my parents had me pitching with the bills at home. I was able to help pay for food, utilities, cable, and rent. I was the model son. My parents praised me on how well I can make money and help support the family. Who says Asian parents aren't encouraging? They even said they were proud of me. <laughs> my parents were always telling me to do better at my job so I can keep moving up because I'm not successful until I reach the top and make more money. I get more hours, heavier workloads, but it's okay. I'm maintaining a barely passing grade and I'm almost done with high school anyways. My idea of success was how quickly I can make more money. I start a new job at a manufacturing company. Work is great, pay is amazing, 
and I think I'm graduating? Who knows? We're all happy because mom and dad doesn't have to work as much, and I was going to college right after high school. I'm moving up in the manufacturing world, but slowly, my hours are holding me back. My boss at the time tells me, hey, if you turn 18 before you graduate, you can take the GED test downtown, and if you pass, it would just be like a diploma. My jaw dropped. If I have my GED, I won't need high school anymore. I won't have a work permit to limit my hours. I quickly Googled GED testing for Santa Clara County. As I hastily click through the links and fill out the forms, I can barely contain myself. I impatiently wait for the printer to print out my directions I get from MapQuest. My anticipation builds as I think about the test. My, I make my appointment and I drive myself to the test center. The sweat beating off my forehead as I'm sitting there taking the test. My heart races as I think of all the possibilities passing this test could bring. I take a deep breath and turning my exam, I passed. I can't believe it. I've just completed my test. I can feel the accomplishment radiating off me as if I'm wearing a big red hat myself. I'm thinking, I wasted my time in high school. Why isn't everyone doing this? An exciting opportunity to make more money faster. The new solar manufacturer, now Solar Open. I got the job right away because my work experience at SunPower made me a shoe in. The demand for solar panels were growing quickly especially when Governor Schwarzenegger signed the Senate bill for solar energy. This meant we had overtime, a lot of overtime. I had to quit college before my first semester ended because I was doing 12 hour days, six days a week. I was making more money than my parents combined. I had nice cars, nice clothes, newest phones, but that lasted only seven years until production was moved to Germany. Unemployment again. Here I am working mindlessly, moving liquid from large vat to small vials for diagnostic test kits. Tube rolls in, push the button. New tube rolls in, push the button. Tube falls over, stand tube up, push the button. That didn't last long. I got replaced by an automated fill line that can correct a tube placement and fill out the, vi fill the vials at the same time. Unemployment again. I had I landed a new job at a, man at a warehouse, uh, moving pallets of goods from freight truck to conveyor belt. Open the box, plates and bowls, goes into housewares conveyor belt. Open the box, sheets, goes into textiles conveyor belt. Open the box, watch, goes into jewelry cage. After work though, I get to look forward to traffic on the 15. Oh, the 15. Sitting in traffic from Poway to El Cajon Boulevard, bumper to bumper. We're slowly inching forward a few feet at a time, awkwardly moving through openings, impatiently changing lanes through traffic, trying to get home. I'm commuting an hour just to go 25 miles. I'm living paycheck to paycheck, nervous if I can make rent. I thought chasing money during high school was the way to go. I didn't have to learn about systems of linear equations or what a conjugate of the verb was. All I had to do is make more money, faster. But that runs out quick when you're applying for jobs with other people who have degrees. I'll apply to Illumina because my background in manufacturing was a perfect fit. But they're looking for people who are currently attending college or have just recently graduated. I don't understand. I have to have a degree to work in manufacturing. Okay, so I applied to Qualcomm. Denied. This goes against all of my work experiences. Okay, I'll apply to SolarGuard St. Gobain. I have extensive knowledge and experience in metallization, and I'll accept any offer to give me. During the interview, I was able to answer all their questions, even include examples how to improve the process. I'll go home and wait for my offer call. A day goes by, no response. Three days goes by, no response. A week goes by. No response. I never got a call back. I'm thinking to myself, what am I doing as I'm sitting at home on the couch waiting for phone calls sitting or sitting idle in traffic being honked at and flipped off? I'm going nowhere fast. I'm getting older and life is still moving. I need to break the cycle of going nowhere. Endless, jo jo endless job searches, failed interviews. I can't compete against candidates with degrees. I need to do something. I can't just sit at the waiting place the waiting place is made for waiting for the doctor, or waiting for the fish to bite, or waiting for the elevator. I'm wasting away, waiting. But the thought of going back to school was scary. The thought of ridicule and age discrimination was embarrassing. I don't know if I'm smart enough to keep up with the younger students. I'll have to learn algebra and trig at my age. I'll have to write essays and take creative writing classes. <laughs> I'll have to pay the bills and make rent while paying for tuition. This is so stressful. But wait, what is this? The California Promise Grant? Wait, you mean my tuition can be paid for and I don't have to pay it back? This is too good to be true. That means I can have my own red hat 
and have guacamole on everything. <laughs> I'm part of the older students attending classes, but here I am. <laughs>